Standard & Poor's recently hosted its 11th Leverage Finance and High Yield Conference in, in London. There were a variety of topics discussed, including market conditions for the loan and high yield bond markets, funding prospects for mid-market companies, as well as presentations on our corporate credit outlook and on some of our empirical recovery data. On this edition of Inside Credit, I'm joined by Paul Waters, Head of Corporate Research, and David Gilmore, Head of Leverage Finance Analytics, to have a discussion about some of the highlights from our conference. Paul and David, welcome. Thank you. Now, um, let's start by talking about the broad sort of, you know, market panel and, and what was discussed about market conditions. I mean, what was, what was interesting to me was our panelists were saying that even though, you know, our conference was very close to when Ben Bernanke made his comments about um, tapering off of QE, that the market was still open, despite the fact that market con conditions were more volatile. And on the bond side, I think that's interesting because it's always been a sort of choppy market with a lot of volatility in terms of issuance windows. And on the loan side, we haven't seen as much sort of um, investor feedback for better terms and conditions and a subsequent response from issuers um, in that regard. So that's what, what I thought was, was initially very interesting. Absolutely, and one of the other interesting elements, I think, was the, the fact that the, the institutional investors, um, buckets for high yield bonds in particular, seems to have, seem to have permanently moved from the sort of zero to two percent range to the six or seven percent range. Mm -hmm. So I thought that, that was an interesting point. Also, I think what was interesting is the discussion about was this move from bank debt to bond debt permanent or not? And I think the, the discussion about fixed fee floating, w was that a, a, a major element? Um, and how that it's not so much the fixed fee voting rates, it's more the uh, bank debt to bond debt being, being a more permanent feature. I, th I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and disintermediation from Absolutely. sort of um, bank, you know, banks providing that to sort of more institutional investors. So. Absolutely. So it's, yeah. hard, I mean, it's hardly even started yet. I mean, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in the euro area, 86% 80, of corporate debt is provi still provided by banks. You know, as Andy Haldane said uh, recently, I mean, he, he describes Europe as a sort of banking monoculture. So, you know, yeah. this is this is a long-term structural change, al albeit you know there will be sort of ups and downs within the uh, within the trend. Yeah, and and you know, we talked, we asked the panelists as well about sort of where is the deal flow coming from? Because at the moment, it's really refinancing uh, led. So a lot of the issuance is, is bonds and, and sometimes, you know, sometimes loans as well, but mostly bonds refinancing loan issuance. Um, but in terms of new deal flow, we really haven't seen any kind of M&A activity um, in Europe generally. And, and I think that was because, mostly because of the economic environment, uh, which is which is not not improving at the moment. So, um, yeah, and you, you talked about this in your presentation at the conference. I mean, absolutely. I mean, for, for corporates operating in Europe, I mean, they still have a fairly sort of conferred conservative mindset. And as you say, I mean, you know, we continue to scale back our growth forecast for the Eurozone. We're looking for minus 0.8% this year, only picking up to anemic growth 0.7% next year. And that's, that's the, the sort of, you know, the, the environment in which you operate if you're, you know, a European economy facing corporate. But uh, you know that translates into into um, you know what we see as continued weakness in, in, in credit quality. We still see, you know, downgrades um, dominating on balance within the sub-investment grade space, driven by you know t declining covenant headroom. And you know we even even saw until the you know the recent setback in the market, we were starting to see more dividend recaps. You know that was sort of driving you know credit quality down. But having said all that, you know it's um, I think the key the key the interesting thing for us I think in corporates is that that actually it's not just what's going on in Europe, um, which we've, you know, which the story I think is pretty well known for the last couple of years, but what's changing is that we're seeing some softness um, developing in, you know, in Asia and Latin America um, relative to our previous expectations. And I think that is more challenging for some of the sort of more international rated companies that have previously been drawing great strength and support from, from you know, the strength, economic strength in those regions. So that's an area that we're watching pretty closely. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a liquidity standpoint, obviously most rated corporates stronger than B+. Plus. I mean, they've really taken advantage of the conditions of the last few years in the capital markets to, as we say, as you already discussed, refinancing bank debt. So liquidity isn't such a big issue for them. But it's still a concern for us in the, you know, for the sort of mainly legacy LBOs that uh, many of which are private, which, uh, you know, which still have yet to refinance and may not be able to refinance. 
in you know in a more challenging environment if if if, if that's what plays out over the next sort of six months nine months. Uh, that's a fair point. One of the interesting uh, stats from S and P L C D, which I think is still very very important, is despite the choppy bond market and despite the concerns over their site volatility, the issuance of the first six months of this year are still is already in excess of the whole of last year's issuance. So even though we're concerned about the the um, the choppiness of the markets, the issuance is still being incredibly strong. Yeah. So I mean, that, those are those are more well-established companies with public ratings that you know that tap the public markets. I mean, the other part of the conference that we we talked about we talked about um, mid-market companies, and and I think one of the themes that we've seen in Europe uh, over the last um, year or so is that there's been it's difficult for certain companies to get financing, whether or not that we're talking about core versus periphery um, or size of companies, and so. We, we talked at our conference about the fact that we've put out this um, new product called MME, Mid-Market Evaluations, um, to, to help facilitate the development of a private placement market in Europe. So that was, you know, that was the other main theme. Absolutely. I think a couple of important points there. One, was, one of the themes that came through very strongly was the desire for keeping this a private market and, and the confidentiality being a key element to that private placement market. And the other theme was, which I thought came through very strongly, was that this desire for some sort of um, depth of mid-market private placement um, uh, debt issuance, that desire has been there for many, many years. It's a question of how do they facilitate it. I, I think the description of it is a, a market being like Gul Gulliver in the land of Lilliput being held out by lots of little regulations, so no single means of releasing, releasing the market. I, I thought was a, a nicely put uh, analogy because it, it basically explained that it's not a simple market to, to, to get moving. And I think the whole point about the, if we can continue the analogy, the whole point about the MME product is as a benchmark, as a means to get a third party reference um, for those smaller or more, more interesting companies, um, the aim is to kick away some of those strings to enable that giant to sort of start moving properly. Yeah, I, I mean, there does seem to be appetite from, you know, particularly from the uh, insurance industry to try and develop a, a pan-European private placement market. Um, and this is very much in scope for the European Commission's recent consultation on long-term investment. And I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of the problems that the Association of Corporate Treasurers refer to in their in their, their paper on 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 the, you know, the Gulliver's all the problems tying down Gulliver and. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in, in their paper on the private placement market, I mean, many of those can be addressed. I mean, but I mean, there are some key key issues around regulation for the insurance sector, and the insurance sector really is is the main provider of liquidity, I think, um, to you know, to potentially to corporates, particularly since they they're no longer really buying um, sort of senior unsecured bank paper, um, given given the the problems in the banking industry. So, you know, this is this is something to watch definitely. Okay. for joining me today to have a chat about that. That concludes this edition of Inside Credit. Thanks for joining us.